Hi guys, welcome back to the UK Stocks with Anna section. Today I wanted to talk about three dividend stocks that are likely to outperform the market based on the SMART score on Tipperance. So if you aren't already aware, the SMART score essentially just rates shares based on the likelihood of them outperforming the market overall. So we can see here that the SMART score performance of the top SMART score stocks uh, compared to the S&P 500 has done fairly well. And if you're wondering how it's calculated, you can see here that it includes Wall Street analysts, insiders, financial bloggers, individual investor sentiment, hedge fund managers, new sentiment, technical and fundamentals. The smart score is updated five days a week, so it is a good idea to keep checking to see what the latest is. So the first stock on the list is Imperial Brands, ticker symbol IMB. Imperial Brands is actually a tobacco company and it is the world's fourth largest international cigarette company, if you measure it by market share just after Philip Morris, British American Tobacco and Japan Tobacco. And it is the world's largest producer of fine cut tobacco and tobacco papers. They produce over 320 billion cigarettes per year and have 51 factories worldwide. And they sell products in over 160 countries. They are also a constituent of the FTSE 100 index. Now you can also see here that they were founded 120 years ago, so they've been around for a long time. I do always try to check how long a company has been around. I know it's not a fail safe on how a company will do in the future, but it just gives me the peace of mind that they have managed to go through a lot over the, that time frame. So it just helps me sort of make the decision on what I think of the company and its likelihood to survive other things. Imperial Brands has a dividend yield of about 8.7%, which is really, really good. So if we have a look at what the analysts are saying on this, we can see here that six of them have said it's a buy, two have said it's a hold, and one have said it's a sell. The average price target shows a potential upside of 18.7%, which is pretty decent. Um, but obviously the lowest one actually shows a potential downside. The Imperial brand smart score is 10, which means it is likely to outperform the market based on this analysis. And you can see here that actually the analyst ratings are moderate by, as we said before, the blogger opinions are pretty bullish and the insider activity, interestingly enough, is the bought shares trend. So over the last three months, shares worth 67,000 were purchased. The ex-dividend date is actually August 19th. So if you were interested in purchasing them, you still have time to purchase and get in on that dividend. So if we do have a look at the news, we can see here that it's actually featured in an article for three UK dividend stocks yielding 6% to buy now. So if we have a look at that article, it actually says that Imperial Brands is one of the cheapest stocks in the FTSE 100. The company shares trade on just six and a half times 2021 forecast earnings and offer a dividend yield of 8.6. However, of course, there are risks because tobacco is dangerous and highly regulated. Smoking rates in Europe are falling and of course, cigarettes might stop fairly soon. However, this may not happen for many years and their performance is currently improving under the new CEO and their high profit margins and strong cash generation are supporting an attractive dividend. Really keen to know what you think of Imperial Brands. I have heard of them before and I've heard it's a very popular stock for investors in the UK. I've personally never looked into them previously. So having done this research, I'm actually really interested in potentially adding them to my portfolio. The next stock on the list is Tesco, ticker symbol TSCO. Tesco has a 4.1% dividend yield and is also a 10 on the smart score ratings, which means it is also likely to outperform the market. The consensus of the analysts is a strong buy. So you can see here, eight of them in the last three months have said that this is a buy stock and only one has said to hold. So the average potential upside here is 28.5%. So it's 
So again, that's the average with the low prediction actually still being higher than the current price. So the lowest price target is 239 and the current price is 224. So no wonder a lot of people are saying this is a buy. The blogger opinions are also bullish and so is the news sentiment. We've also got the insider activity here, which shows almost a hundred thousand pounds of shares have been bought by insiders in the last three months. So if we have a look at that, actually the shares were purchased by the non-executive director and the chief financial officer. So that tells me that they have confidence in the company. The informative purchases are actually showing a vote of confidence in the company. So it basically means that it's not as part of a share buying scheme or anything in the company. This is actually an informed decision by the company members. Now, if you haven't heard of Tesco, which I'm pretty sure you would have, but they are one of our biggest supermarkets here in the UK. You can see here, they are the third largest retailer in the world measured by gross revenues. That's interesting. I actually didn't know that it was in the world. I knew that they had stores elsewhere, but I didn't actually know that they were the third biggest in the world and the ninth largest measured by revenues. It has shops in five countries across Europe and is the market leader of groceries in the UK, where it has a market share of around 28.4%. Now Tesco has been around for 102 years and they are a component of the FTSE 100. So if we have a look at the news section again to see what's driving the positive score on the news section, we can see here that there's a lot around its price and whether it's currently trading at a discount, etc. And again, we can see on this Motley Fool article here that Despite the latest earnings report looking quite underwhelming, there are a lot of things in here that seem promising. So for example, they've seen a 68% increase in like for like catering sales that increased its overall revenue by 9.2%. Seems to be a benefit from the return of the hospitality sector. The sales from its supermarkets have also performed relatively well Comparing to a year ago, growth remains paltry at 1.3%. However, if you go back two years ago to get the pre-pandemic comparison, overall sales were actually up 8.7%. The online grocery sales were also up by 81.6% and 22% compared to a year ago. The fuel sales were also up by 68%, mainly due to the increased number of cars on the road. So obviously the question then begs, why is the share price down and seems to be at a discount? And the reason is also answered here in terms of the fact that people are scared about inflation. So in the UK at the moment, there is a lot of talk around inflation and what's going to happen with food prices rising. Considering there are a lot of retailers here like Aldi and Lidl, which do compete with Tesco, they do have to be careful around food prices, etc. However, they seem to have dealt with this by price matching to places like Aldi, which I think is really good, but undoubtedly it will hit their profit margins. It does seem though like the conclusion in this article is that despite it not being groundbreaking, seeing high double digit growth across the divisions, it does seem like they can return to pre-pandemic levels. So it does look like an opportunity to buy um, at a lower price. So the final stock that I want to look at in this video is IMI, ticker symbol IMI. IMI is formerly Imperial Metal Industries and is actually a British based engineering company headquartered in Birmingham. It's a constituent of the FTSE 250 index and was founded in 1862, which means it's almost 160 years old. So we can see here that the analyst ratings are also a strong buy for this stock. So out of the eight ratings in the last three months, six have been to buy and two have been to hold. With the high forecast of 1,900 and the lowest forecast of 1,485, so actually the average is a 
almost 1% downside, which is really interesting. It's the first time I've seen something like this where the majority of analysts say buy, but the average price target is lower than it currently is. Now, it could be that it's currently spiked up a little bit since these ratings, because we can see here that these were five, eight, 22 days ago, etc. So whilst they've been within the last three months, the share price has slightly moved. So if we have a look at their dividend yield, it is actually about 2.8% overall in the last 12 months. It does seem to have dropped over the last couple of years but was previously fairly consistent. So assuming that the current world situation has impacted on that. However, if we look at the total return over the last 15 years, you can see here just how much the total return has been for shareholders, 458%. And even if we look here at the stock charts, in the last one year, it has gone from around 900, 880 to the current 1700. I might also have a smart score of 10 and the insider activity is also trending towards buying. So around 40,000 pounds here, of which actually all of that was an informative buy as well closely followed by a sell by the finance director, which is really interesting. So in terms of the news articles, we've got one here, why IMI could be worth watching. And it does seem like they are trading at a fairly cheap price, um, comparing the PE ratio to the machinery industry average, they are lower. So they're trading at a lower price, However, it does seem like their share price volatility is high. So I guess that explains why that analyst rating was so different compared to the price target. So it also shows that their earnings over the next few years are expected to increase by 33%, indicating a highly optimistic future ahead. It does seem like they are also saying that it might be the time to enter the stock if you are thinking about it. That's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of all of these. Do you hold any of them? Are you going to do some more research into it? Hopefully this has been useful and I will see you next time. Bye.